What is going on? And welcome back to another episode of the Everyday Growth Podcast. Man, am I super excited. I finally have Chase Smith on. Brother, how are you doing today? Doing awesome, man. How are you doing? Dude, I'm doing great. Man, we could just already record it for 20 minutes before we got on air here. But uh, <laughs> man, um, how's everything going with this quarantine life? And how are you? How is this playing out for you? I know we talked before um, we came on here and I had no idea that you're a registered nurse. It's like, holy shit, man, you are in it, man. Yeah, right, right in the thick of things. And it's definitely changing. You know, it hasn't changed a lot as far as like my just like life goes, you know, I still go to work, of course, since I'm a nurse and um, that hasn't changed. I mean, it's changed as far as like my gym, you know, it's closed and I have to do my own thing at home with workouts. But um, yeah, working right on the front lines with some great people and great team and we're trying to get through it, take it day by day and things are changing every day. It's amazing, man. You are definitely wearing the cape and uh, you're definitely, I want to bring right now community. We've probably had a couple podcasts in a row now that we've had some people that are actually working on the front lines. And I just want to take a second right now to say thank you to each and every one of you, especially you, Chase. I do think you are wearing the cape and you are definitely here in my eyes and the community's eyes. Thank you so much. What is kind of like the, uh, how do you come home, man? You're coming home and stripping down right when you get in the door. What's kind of like the, what's kind of like the protocol? Pretty much. Like I get home and I lie saw my lunchbox out on the porch and come right inside the door. And as soon as I'm inside, I strip down and take everything to the washer and then go right upstairs to the shower and clean off. And I don't even wear my shoes, the same shoes home. I change at work before I even get into my car. <laughs> are, you leaving, my best. are you guys able to like leave a lot of things there in the locker or is it just kind of like in a bag in your car? Like that's where it stays. Um, no, but they actually are a certain implement. They're getting us some scrubs that we can change into once we get to work and take them off before we leave and put on our home clothes to go home. So at least that'll help a little bit with bringing things home. How is that? I mean, it's got to be an emotional, emotional uh, kind of a day every day you wake up and go to work, right? Like how is that kind of playing on your emotions as you go into to work every single day? And it can't be... It may be to you, you've been doing it for quite, for quite some time now. And it's like, is that uh, kind of like the norm? It's just another day for you. It's just different protocols or it's kind of like a little, little sketchy, a little scary now that you're going into work like this. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, but it's, it's definitely a little sketchy, a little bit, you know, worrisome, you know, I, you know, we all try to put on our brave face, you know, you know, confront, you know, best we can, but you know, it's definitely something to think about and something to worry about going into work um, every day. I mean, I do think about it. You know, I, I know when I, you know, sign up to be a nurse that I'm going to be dealing with, you know, different diseases and conditions and contagious things that, you know, I'm going to come across every day, but you know, this is a little bit different. And also, you know, with the um, national PPE shortage and everything that makes things a little bit more complicated as well. How is that working out? You guys can only use some, like use some things as like, I know gloves come off all the time. And I know like, how long are you able to use masks and things like that? Especially you are in an ER, right? So it's probably a little different for you. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're coming in contact with someone that we are sus suspicious that they may have the coronavirus, or if it's um, someone that we know for sure definitely has it, we are changing things all the time. But um, we also have like a universal, um, PPE requirement or like where we're wearing mask and um, eyewear all the time now um, with every single patient, even when we're not with the patients, but if we're in the building, we have that stuff on. And, but the only time we do change it is if we come in contact with someone we believe has it. Wow. That's uh, quite a, quite a thing to probably bear witness to seeing that it's probably never been across something like this yet in, in your service and in your, in your uh, line of work yet. Right? No, I have not. So, hey, man, I just want to say thank you one more time before we turn the page and move on. And I just think you're doing an amazing job. And I mean, for for everyone who really doesn't know in this community, I've known Chase for a little bit of time and a little bit of backstory between us is we met through your nutrition coach, correct? Yes, Josh. Yeah, I think I believe Josh and I had a couple podcasts together. And then all of a sudden, you and I started following each other. And I heard of your story of this amazing, incredible whole other person that you lost <laughs> coming <laughs> off. But um, what's kind of your backstory and how you got into fitness and nutrition? And I know there's a huge weight loss story here. And man, just let the community know that um, this is your time. This is your platform, Chase. Like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think you're doing an amazing job and you have an amazing story. So please let this podcast be your platform to tell the story. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'll just kind of give a quick background. Um, you know, I starting in you know, childhood, I've always been a heavy kid grew up all my life being a heavy kid and you know I've always you know had some problems with binge eating and growing up and 
Um, never been really an active person, was never into sports, you know, I was more into like the clubs and stuff at school and um, just never really got into that kind of stuff and just kept putting the weight on over and over as, as time went on and um, really started to put on the weight towards like middle of high school and into college and everything. That's when the pounds really started adding up. But, um, you know, I've, I've always tried dieting. I've tried every year different, you know, whatever the latest, greatest diet is at the time, you know, you know, not naming names of the different diets, but we all know the low carb and all that different stuff right. that they have out there. Um, I tried all those and miss all every year. I, that was my goal. I'm going to lose weight this year and I'd start doing the diet. I'd probably lose 30, 40 pounds or so, um, pretty quickly. Um, but then I'd hit that plateau and because the diet was so restrictive and something that you just can't stick with, you know, like you know, who, who can like eat like 20 carbs a day and be happy and who can have, you know, like just all those crazy diets that are out there that, you know, we think we should be doing. And I, you know, after two, three, four weeks of trying that diet and being on that plateau, I'd just say, you know what, this isn't working heck with it, you know, and I would just give up and I'd return right back to my binge eating habits, return right back to all my bad habits of, you know, I just had a pretty crappy relationship with food, honestly. Um, and so I'd put the weight right back on that I had lost and then I'd continue to gain more. And, and it was just that can just spiral over and over and over every single year. Um, but then last year, um, a good friend of mine and, um, she, we actually worked together at, um, the last hospital I worked at. Um, she just came to me and she was like, Hey, let's have a, a weight loss challenge and see who can lose the most weight. And, I was just like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And I didn't really even think anything of it. Just more or less just, okay, just another competition, you know, hey, have a good accountability partner. We'll just kind of roll with it. Um, and so we both just started going to the gym. Um, I pretty much started last, or I should say, I have started January 1st, 2019 um, and started going to the gym pretty much right away. Um, started watching what I was eating. Um, I started out with some intermittent fasting. Again, that was just one of the trends that was kind of right. big during that time. And I um, did that for a little while and just realized it wasn't for me. And that was about the time I started learning more about like calorie control and counting calories and macros and such like that. Um, and after about like a month or two, both of us were seeing good results and we were both, you know, we just ended up ditching the competition um, just because we were like, you know, we're both doing well why make it you know discouraging if one of the other one of us is doing better than the other um let's just push each other to who can better themselves the best you know and we really just keep kept each other accountable going to the gym together um, talking about you know nutrition with each other um and from there we um and from that point forward i just kept going and kept going and I, that's when I met Josh back in, it's, a, it's been almost a year now. We met in April last year. Um, and he started introducing me more to like counting macros and helping him out with that. And, um, he initially had offered to, um, start like a coaching relationship with me. Um, and I, and I was doing pretty well at the time. So I, I, I turned on the coaching, but I, you know, I still joined his Facebook community and we kept up and he was awesome about still continuing to, um, help me out with like, you know, guidance and as far as like tips and tricks and, um, how to, the, the right way of losing weight, I guess I should say. Um, and I lost my first 100 pounds in about towards the end of May, uh, last year. Crazy. And I just, I started slowly working my calories up. Um, and throughout the year, it's, as I'm raising my calories, I'm still losing weight. Um, and by the end of the year, um, or to say in August, um, I started hitting a plateau a little bit, needing some help. So that's when Josh and I started working together, um, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and from there we just kept working together. And by December, towards the end of December, I was eating over 2,700 calories. And at the end of December, I hit the 150 pound mark. Um, so losing oh, 150, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, losing 150 pounds in a year, um, was amazing. Like my, my goal in the beginning was like lose like 50 pounds and turn it into lose a hundred pounds. And then it was lose 150 pounds by the end of the year. And I did it. 
And that was just amazing. I mean, I, I can't even explain how amazing that felt and what an accomplishment that was um, for me. And I've just continued to keep my habits up. And um, this year we went into another deficit, um, January 6th. And I just now finished up that deficit. I lost like another 20 pounds and I've lost about 170 pounds total now. Holy cow, man. Yeah. That that's is, the, uh, that's that's a long story, real sweet, really short and sweet, but yeah. That's incredible, man. Be happy about that. I mean, you've basically lost a mini you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you lost a whole person. What was your, what was your highest weight when you started um, before all, when you went through all like the diet trends, intermittent fasting, low carb or all this other bullshit that was probably out there at the time. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you're just trying to pull something to better yourself. And I think we've all been there. We've all done that. I've done it. You know, I've done pretty much I mean, every fucking diet that's out there minus like keto. Cause I just think it's ridiculous, but Hey, yeah. to each their own. But I've tried everything out there before I understood anything about nutrition. And it was that at that time, it's like, we're just pulling at anything. Like I need to do something. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, this seems good. I read this book. Oh, here's the new thing here. Low carb. How, what was your weight when you were going through that influx of up and down, up and down, up and down? You know, I didn't really, I mean, I never wrote it down really like the past couple of years. Like, I, I mean, I remember I t- check my weight and you know, when I go to the doctor or stuff like that, but like, I never really, I don't have any of it like written down anywhere. So I don't know, like, throughout the years what it was fluctuating but i do know when i started january 1st last year i was 382.4 wow holy cow man how old are you 25 yeah so you're you're a young dude so they need that needed to be done asap how are you feeling today with all that weight off can you can you honestly feel like measurable differences in your body how you work out how you're breathing, how you don't lose breath, you know, how you don't lose your breath as you're walking maybe upstairs or something like that. What is the feeling behind losing all of 170 pounds? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, how do you feel, man? I feel like a different person. Okay. I, I really do. I mean, like, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm even just my health is a hundred times better. I mean, like I was on multiple different medications and now I'm down to like two different, just two meds and, um, which are two that I really, you know, can't really help with my weight or whatnot. But, um, and you know, like I used to have sleep apnea, you know, I was on a CPAP breathing machine at night, um, because I was stopped breathing at night and my oxygen was dropping and, you know, crazy stuff, um, for, especially for someone my age. And now I'm, I no longer have the CPAP at night, breathing great. Um, my workouts are great. You know, I remember even like looking back at like, running a mile or I should say walking a mile like, like you know I remember back in like school like where I would be terrified of like you know they have like the mile like fitness test right and I would like do everything I could to, like avoid that or you know you know I would just magically be sick that day or something like I just did not want to do that and it would almost like put me in tears every year when it was came that time and I know that sounds crazy but like no just, not at all <laughs> no 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 not at all <laughs> that just it I I just, I hated anything like that. Um, you know, like the 20 minute mile pretty much. And like now I'm able to comfortably run a mile and like my PR is like eight minutes and something. Um, and after I run that, I feel great. Like not a single complaint. You know, I, I feel good after it. Well, that's, that's probably better than what I can do right now. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, it's such a testament of who you've become. Um, not that, the person that you were, you know, that's not you today and that no way, shape or form, like that's not the foundation that you live on, but you look back at that and you just know that you never want to be back there again. Like that doesn't define who you are, but you know that feeling, right? And uh, you and I both have had adversities, but it's like, you look back at the things we've overcome. It's like, I am never going back there again, ever. And I think that's the big thing is like, you need to push through some of that pain to get on the other side. And then once you're on that other side, it's that one day, that one week, that one month, you're like, I, I'm never going back again because this is working and I feel better. And it's one of those things where for you to even say that like a 20 minute mile is now an eight minute mile is astonishing. But even more than that is I know the person that you are today and I don't know much of who you are back in the day, but I can tell you right now that you look forward to challenges now and you don't run from them. Absolutely. Could not agree more. And it's, you just have to keep pushing and like pass those hard moments. 
and it, it's going to be tough, but you just got to keep pushing. Where do you go from here now? Are you back um, on a reverse now, coming back up, kind of getting your calories back going, or are you still uh, cutting right now since it's uh, kind of quarantine time, we're not working out, or what's going on with the macros and calories right now? Um, currently working my way back up to maintenance level. Um, and so it just went up, I think it was, really, it was like 200 calories or something like that last week. And so, you know, here in the next few days, we're going to go up on calories again, you know, working our way back up to maintenance and going to ride that out for a while. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still working out even with the quarantine stuff. I, you know, thankfully I beat some of the crowd out to the, um, sporting goods stores and I got, you know, a few <laughs> sets of dumbbells before they were all sold out. Um, and just, you know, ordered some of those and I got a weight bench and actually just got some TRX straps in the mail yesterday. Yeah. Just working on them. I, um, just, you know, I'm trying to just build up a little home gym supply here at the house and, you know, keep things moving, keep progress going. And you know, it really doesn't take much, man. Like we, like, yeah. like, like, you know, I got the TRX uh, the other week mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, you can just toss that up and do a quick, you know, 15, 20, 25 minute. I mean, 30 minutes on T-Rex is pretty rough. I know they have some 45 minute things and on the app, they actually have some live workouts too. But I threw down like two 15 minute workouts yesterday on it. One in the morning, one at night, just because I was sitting around, I didn't have a lot of movement. And the first 15 minute one was like, kind of like just a bunch of random movements. I didn't feel like I got much out of it, which I probably did. But the second 15 minute, I just did my own thing, got a good pump going. And today it's like, I feel great. You know, it's like those small little workouts just from that alone. Like it doesn't take much, man. And just if you keep your body moving, like, you know, I'm sure there's not a day that goes by that you don't get your steps in now, you know, like, you know, that the movement can truly, truly help you out. Do you shoot for goals like that pretty much every day? Do you try to move every day or you try to work out four days a week? What's kind of like your goals now with this brand new mindset and this brand new body after you lost all that 170, holy shit pounds. I'm like, damn, every time I say it, like, I don't even know how you say it and don't smile every time. I'm like, yeah, I say it for you and I smile because it's just, it's an extraordinary feat, man. It really is. It should be a fucking TV show. It really should be. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, I believe your Instagram is changing chase, right? Yes. Yeah. So you guys go follow chase at changing chase. I, everything he posts is all about nutrition and his journey into this beautiful new world that he is, he's dove into and he's earned it for sure. But what's, what's kind of like your, your daily protocols going forward for your fitness and nutrition? Um, I'm, I work out about four days a week. Um, I, I work three days, I work three 12 hour shifts every week. And so on my off days, I'm working out, um, trying to get, you know, I don't count my steps, but you know, I'm, you know, I usually like my cardio right now is pretty much just running or at least going for a walk. So if I'm, you know, maybe not feeling up to, you know, run, I'll at least go for a walk. Right. Um, but I still stick into that. Um, and nutrition, I'm just, you know, still counting my macros every day and keeping track of everything of that. That's awesome, man. I'm sure you're getting plenty of movement when you're at work too. I'm sure you probably don't sit down too much when you're <laughs> doing those, those long and those long days, but man, it's awesome, dude. So where is your maintenance at right now? I said before you said you was close to 2,700. Is it still kind of around there? Or is it low? Is it lowered a little bit now? You lost some weight or you're going to find it again, right? Yeah, I'm going to have to find it again. You know, right, right now we're, we're probably about, about like 21, 2200 right now. Um, somewhere around there. Um, and so I'm going to slowly start working my way back up and find out where that's going to be at. And, it, and it, I'm fucking it probably will be maybe lower, but then again, you know, I'm, you know, it, it could be higher. Who knows? I mean, right. Won't know until we get there. Right. So I'd like to dive in a little bit about the mindset you have now compared to the mindset you had back in the day when you had all that weight back on and what you can actually um, bring some awareness to anyone who's listening to this, whether it's big weight loss or small weight loss, it's all kind of in the same boat. We all have to kind of follow the same protocols and you should probably have the same mindset and from the mindset that you have today, it has to be so much stronger than what you had back in the day. Like you said, like looking up into those, you know, you're looking to back to those one, like those one mile tests at school and stuff. It's like, you probably weren't the most confident of a person in that body, but it's like for, for anyone that's listening right now that wants to lose any type of weight, I'm going to go ahead and say challenge yourself because I know for a fact that if this man can go through the last over a year and lose that type of weight, like you have no excuse. You just really, you don't have any excuse. What can you kind of tell the people what, what your mindset is today to help them kind of get through what the hell they're going through? You know, getting through that. Um, and this is something that, you know, Josh and coaches talked a lot about as well. And, you know, and, and it is very true to get rid of that all or nothing mindset and just being consistent. 
I mean, that consistency is key when it comes to this stuff. I mean, there are, there are going to be tons of rough days. I mean, there really are. I mean, I've, I've had my struggles, you know, no one's perfect. You know, sometimes it may come across that, you know, may not be struggling very much, but you know, we all do. And you just got to remember just to keep going, even when you have a rough day. Um, I mean, you know, looking over the past, you know, over a year that I've been doing this, you know, there've been days where I've eaten like an ass, you know, or something like that. And part of you wants to just, you know, say, oh, you know, I, I just completely binged out, you know, a whole entire meal and there's no, I'm going to gain all this weight and everything because of that. But you're not going to like, it's, it's right. And I, it's so easy to believe that. But I wish people would understand that is like, you can't screw this up. You, you really can't. Like if you have a bad day, that's one day out of the entire year, just get back to it that next day. And I mean, and even like, I mean, I went on vacation um, in the summer and I, you know, my goal was to work out, you know, you know, almost every day there cause I'd have plenty of time and, you know, somewhat control, you know, what I was eating, everything, you know, I was still going to enjoy everything, but you know, I, you know, it worked out probably three or four days of the week and I ate plenty of stuff that, you know, you know <laughs> I, I, let's just say I really enjoyed myself, but you know, that's vacation. It's exactly. vacation. And, you know, and that's what I started to realize. And, and I came back and, you know, some people were like, you know, don't weigh yourself, you know, the morning you get back or whatnot. And, but I did just to see, I put on two pounds <laughs> and within less than a week, I was, I'd lost that two pounds and then I was hitting a new low. Your body probably needed some extra calories, man. <laughs> exactly. And you know, it enjoyed that. And again, staying consistent. So that even shows you even one week of not really, you know, just throwing it out the door or whatever, you know, you're not going to screw this up. You just got to get back to it. The only time you mess up is if you just completely throw in the towel together and give up completely. I think, you know, consistently being consistent is I think what all the great coaches I surround myself with just keep on saying, you know, I can from Jason Phillips on one end of the spectrum to myself and Josh Pierce and everyone else. And on the other side of the spectrum, like everyone in between who is a good coach, consistency is everything. And that all or nothing mentality is just bullshit. You can be all in on something that's different guys. That's not what we're saying. Be all in on anything that you do, whether it be fitness, weight loss, fit, whatever you guys are doing in your life, be all in on that. But the all or nothing, what Chase is saying is completely different. The all or nothing is you're just like, Oh, if I can't get to the gym, then I'm not going to go work out. You know, like you just said it perfectly. If you don't feel like going for a run, at least you go for a walk. Yes, exactly. You, you know, it's better than sitting on the couch and, and then an hour later, you'd be like, man, I should have went for that fucking walk. <laughs> <You know? Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> Where is, um, I love that. I think that's like the number one key is consistency around food. When did you start to change your relationship with food? Because I do believe everyone that has, so I think, I also think there's a big mindset shift with, since we're talking about consistency and going, you know, the all or nothing. I feel that not just with, you know, my clients, I, with myself personally, we kind of make excuses to kind of go ahead and like, no, I'm just, if I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to go ahead and eat this weekend out and try to get back to it the next day. It's one of those things like that's a really bad relationship with food. It's almost like we use that as a coping mechanism, as an excuse to go ahead and binge the whole weekend away and be like, I'll just go Monday through Friday hard again and hurt myself or myself in such a bigger deficit. And that's a really bad, I mean, that's eh, borderline, you know, that could be an eating disorder. It really, really, really could. When you start looking at food as good or bad, I do believe that's a start of a disorder. And I think we need to bring that to the forefront also, not just in this podcast with yourself and me, but in, in general, I think everyone should look at food in a different light. When did you kind of start looking at food in a different way from that negative mindset of, man, food, this food's bad, that food's good, this food's bad, I can't have that ever. I know now that you have anything that you want because I see the pictures and that's <laughs> awesome. And I think you should be able to have anything you want, man. Yeah, you know, I think it was when I started to um, count calories and macros. Um, and now, and I know that's not for everybody. Not, right. And not everybody can count macros, not, or I mean, everybody can. It's just not everyone will want to, or you know, maybe it's just not a good fit for some people, which I completely understand. Right. Do what do what you need to do to, you know, be consistent and be successful. But um, when I started looking at just every, you know, a calorie is a calorie, you know, and I think it's something that like Jordan Syatt says is like, you know, we're saying a calorie is a calorie, but we're not saying that they're the same like nutrition. Exactly. I mean, like, you know, 
hundred calories of ice cream is not the same as hundred calories of lettuce, you know, but, but hundred calories is hundred calories. And when you start looking at things like that, you know, then you can enjoy the other things, you know, you can, I can easily just plan ahead and work anything I want into my day. You know, if I want to go have pizza, you know, tonight, I go ahead and throw that, you know, I track my food in my fitness pal and I just could go ahead and throw in a couple slices of pizza in there, build the rest of my day around it, go enjoy that pizza and, you know, know that I'm still, you know, being successful and hitting my goals. Was that tough at first for you to do to get your kind of wrap your head around that from going from not doing it at all? Cause I know what you just said is where a lot of people fail. That last sentence you just said is, yeah, I can have that pizza and I go ahead and plan my day around all of that. So everyone's looking at that like, wow, that sounds like a lot of fucking work, Chase. Why would I do something like that? <laughs> at first, how hard was it? And like, you know, that's why we always say like the first month of nutrition coaching is kind of like, it's kind of like a wash. I think I just said at the other podcast the other day and we all say it together, like the whole first month is you learning. There's so much information overload and you're just trying to do things. But I do think like that's one thing that can be handled in 30 days is learning how to track the correct way. I mean, it's really simple, but how long did that kind of take you to go? And what, how difficult was that to first start doing that? It, it took a little while to get used to. Um, and I think I like started tracking a little bit and I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. And I, and I think I stopped for a little while. Um, but then I realized that like, that's what I need to keep doing to, you know, keep at it. And, you know, and once I started learning, it, like, and it is, it is difficult in the very beginning, getting used to it and learning how to use the app correctly. And it, it seems very daunting at first and it seems like so much information but if you just start you know learning taking baby steps you know as in time goes on you'll start getting more comfortable with it you know and after a while you know probably after the first like you said the month or so um i started learning how to use it towards my benefit rather than as like a hindrance yeah, I definitely do think you can a lot of people look at it in one way or another and a lot of there's been like a, there's even been studies i believe on like um could it be a bad thing for you for tracking your food? Like, is it, is it obsessive? You know, and like, yeah, it, it can be. I understand on that side mm -hmm. of the coin. Like, I'll, I'm always up for a good, a good talk, you know, and set until it gets into an argument that I don't need it anymore. But I could see that. I could see that with some people, you know, like if, if you have an, an obsessive, um, you know, if you're obsessive with a lot of things in your life and you start doing this and you're obsessively, I mean, weighing out um, a half a cup of apple juice or something, like if you get into it that crazily, then I understand that, it, hey, that may not be for you. And you can do this thing without tracking your food. You can. I mm -hmm. think it'll, it'll just take a little bit longer to get to your goals. And I, ha I believe you have to have the mindset. Just like stepping on a scale every single day, it's not for everybody. Or don't do it at all. You know, it's one of those things where if you can do it a couple times a week and be happy, cool. If you have to do it every single day because you need to know where you're at and that justifies where you eat your food, that's a whole nother conversation that we need to have. And that's very unhealthy. Um, as far as, did you ever feel that way at all? Did you ever feel like you were becoming obsessed with everything around you in order to like weigh every second, like, like a half a cookie, you know, like, okay, that's a half of a cookie. Um, did you get to that point? Were you so destined to lose all that weight? Or were you just like, Hey man, it's going to happen when it happens. I want to enjoy my life at such a young age. Um, I mean, I have been very consistent, I guess I could say. I mean, like with, with my tracking, you know, I do weigh out my foods and everything. And um, just because I find that holds me accountable and, and keeps me more consistent, um, you know, and I, I have, but I still occasionally throw in like, you know, the intuitive eating days, you know, if I'm going to go to a party or something, you know, I, I just go and enjoy it and just, you know, eat, you know, what I, you know, consider as like a strong balanced meal. Um, but you know, and my coach has, you know, offered to like throw in some more intuitive days. And, you know, and I think that with time that will come and right now I'm not at that level, I think just yet. Um, but of course that is my angle. I think it's everybody's goal who's tracking is to eventually, you know, get to the day where you can just intuitively eat and not have to worry about tracking your foods. And that is my goal eventually. Um, maybe that'll come towards the end of this year. Who knows more, maybe it'll be, you know, later on. And I think only time will tell. And, um, you just have to really start, but I think also by tracking, it starts teaching you more about the food you're eating as well. Yes. And I, I love it. Facts, facts. Yes. Yeah. So like you, you know, what's going into that food that you're eating and because there's so many foods out there that look like good foods and the labels look good. <laughs> but as soon as you start logging them in, it's like, holy shit, 
yeah. that, that that high protein granola bar that you know looks like it has a great packaging on it that makes it look uh, amazingly good for you high it's protein just, <laughs> it's nothing but like fat and carbs and like you know a little bit of protein the, right. on it and so like when you start looking at that kind of stuff it really opens your eyes to what is actually nutrition nutritious and what is not yeah, I love that too. There's a guy, I, th I think you might follow him because it's kind of in the realm of every, every we all follow kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, his name's Aiden, the dietitian and on Instagram. And he just compares what you exactly just said. He like puts a protein bar and then puts like a Snickers and shows you that the Snickers is like 50 calories less. And people are like, yep. oh, but that's not nutritious. It's like, no, if you look at the back of that granola bar dummy, it's almost the same thing. You might as well mm -hmm. indulge yourself. Don't cut that Snickers bar out for less calories and understand that you know, calories in or calories out, do they have the same, you know, the same macros and micro? No, but we know that we know quality is different. But for me at that time, if I'm looking at the two things, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna grab the Snickers bar because I don't know when I'm going to give myself this chance again. I think it's a huge thing. When you start tracking, you start understanding food like 100%. And with, man, this is such a crazy conversation we're having. All these things are popping in my head. It's like, I don't think you can get to the intuitive eating part without tracking at all in the beginning. Like you yes. have to learn, like you just said, you know that when you have something that's delicious, have one donut, then look at those macros in your MyFitnessPal. You're like, okay, I, gotta, I, gotta, I have got to rearrange my day now. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you just like throwing, oh, this is going to be intuitive eating day. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely like, shit, that happened. And you know, it's, it's one of those things like it, it, it it calls you out, man. It really does call you out because mm -hmm. there's definitely days where, where I've been like, you know what, forget it. Today is Saturday morning. I've had a rough week. You know, I go out and get a half a dozen or a dozen donuts with my girlfriend and we go to, we go to town with some coffee and we just relax, you know, and you go ahead and like, oh, I had like three or four of those donuts, put those all in. You're like, holy shit. Like my day's over, <laughs> you know, yep. like, and, and that's just how quickly it does. But I, without even knowing that's where we get into trouble. I mean, how many times have you sat down and just one chip, one chip, next thing you know, you're three episodes deep on a Netflix show. Next thing you know, you're like tip the bag upside down. You're like, Oh shit. <laughs> like it happens yep. all the time. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mindless eating is a real thing, dude. I think that was a big problem. Was that a big problem for you? I know when, back in the day for me, it was like, I would eat past the point of being full. And I think that's where a lot of my problems with my bad relationship with food came from. Were you kind of in the same boat too with that? You just, when, whenever I, I leaned through, through um, my depression and my struggles too, not to talk about me at all, but like I leaned on food a lot. It was my best friend. And I loved to cook, which was like a double-edged sword. As a, I'm, I use it as an excuse. Like a, a, it was my guilt trip. Like, oh, I'm learning a new recipe, idiot. Go ahead and eat again for the 16th time today. Did you kind of have those problems too, going through what you went through? Exactly. And just, you hit the nail on the head. I, I was also, I, I ate for every emotion. If, if, right. I, was, if I was happy, celebrating, you know, there was food. If I was sad and depressed, I was reaching for food. If I was bored, just sitting around the house, not doing anything, I reached for food. And it was just a nonstop roller coaster with all of that. And I ate for every emotion pretty much. And, and I would, I would just like grab the bag and start eating. And like you said, next thing you know, it's empty. And it's like, holy cow. <laughs> I just, yeah, it happens that quick too. Like you don't even yes. know it's all of a sudden you're like, Oh shit, it's gone. I just bought those yesterday. Like, yes. When did that kind of subside and how do you have any of those emotions anymore? Do you, are you so kind of not to get too personal with, you don't have to answer any of these questions are just coming in as I, as I, as I, we sit here and talk, but I know, I know that I, I have to fight some things off still to this day and I'm, I'm well older than you. And it's like, I still, there's some things I still fight once in a while. Like, don't get me wrong, man. Milkshakes and donuts are like, and cookies. Oh man. Like, especially getting nicer outside. We have around us, we have a lot of these, um, they're called uh, creameries or like these, they're, they're, all, they're all over the place for, by me and they're all franchised out. And some of them stay open year round which is trouble like you can just go out and get a big old cup of ice cream anytime you want like in december you know so <laughs> but like in the summer times man it's walking distance from my house we can go for a nice little 20 minute walk there and back and we can stop and get a big thing of ice cream but ice cream is like my jam right i love summer ice cream there's something about it especially at night when it's cool and the, you know the bugs are out i love that I, I reach for that stuff but i have to fight that emotion all the time because it's like we have goals right you understand that i mean i don't even have ice cream in my house that may sound bad to some people but it's not because I know if it's there, I'm going to try to fit it in almost every damn day. And when I can be actually filling that void, filling those calories with something that's better for my body at that time. Do you kind of face struggles still to this day? 
Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's still times where, you know, I see something and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm going to have to have that. And you know, even, whether I'm able to work it in or not, you know, like, right. It's just, there are some times and, and I'd still find myself occasionally if I am bored, you know, wanting to turn to food and, and now I just try to like, sometimes I'm able to cut it off, you know, like I'll make that connection. Like you're bored, you're not hungry, stop what you're doing, go, go find something to do, drink some water, you know, go do something. But then there are times where I will start reaching for food and eating and I'm just, and I'll eat something. And I'm like, I wasn't hungry. Why, why did I just eat that? You know, that there was no point in that. Um, but you know, I still have to make those connections from time to time and those things still do pop up and, you know, I still, you know, and I'm the same way with like not keeping like those like really like high palatable foods in my house, you know, like not that I can't have them and not that I don't have them. It's just like you said, you know, if, if like, I know like sweets used to be a big thing for me, like, you know, I always had like a tray of cookies or brownies or something, you know, sitting around the house and right. And it would be no time for I'd like end up crushing the whole container. Dude, brownies are trouble. <laughs> brownies are trouble because yes. they, they sit out and it's a pan of them. And you just yes. look at them every time you pass by and you're like, ooh, yep. hey, you're still here, huh? I'll, I'll, yeah. take, a little, I'll take a little nibble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then that's exactly what would happen. So like, and so that's why now I try not to just keep that stuff just sitting around just because I know that just mindlessly I'll just walk by and just grab one and, just, and then I'll grab another and then another and so, you know, I st- I'll enjoy those things when the time comes or I'll save those kind of moments for um, when it is special. You know, if I'm out, you know, going out to eat somewhere and, you know, if I want to enjoy a nice dessert or, if, you know, I occasionally now I'll buy, you know, like the, they make like those like personal size things now that you can buy. Like occasionally I'll have one of those um, just as a little special treat that I'll work in. But um, definitely have to be careful just leaving that kind of stuff sitting around. That's a great point too. It's like, you can have those things. And if you don't keep like the gallon or the pint of ice cream in the day, they make everything so small nowadays. Mm -hmm. You can buy some bite sized stuff and call it quits after that. You know, I think that's where we get into trouble is the serving size with everything, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. you show me someone that can scoop out an exact two tablespoons of peanut butter. I mean, we always use the peanut (laughs) (laughs) Peanut butter. (laughs) Dude, the peanut butter example, right? We always say that like, I guarantee my scoop of peanut butter is going to be different than yours when I'm hungry. Like I like for real. (laughs) And if you ever want to see what that weighs, put that, put that spoon on that scale and see exactly what that is. It's not what you think. No, (laughs) that's another, and you bring up a very good point about like, even like with the weighing your foods, like you you think that you or like, like a tablespoon of olive oil when you're cooking, like you you think you're using a tablespoon, but like when, if you ever like actually weigh out a, what a tablespoon of olive oil is, you're using a lot more. <laughs> oh, you're easily using maybe three, four, maybe even five servings. Cause a bloop out of a container <laughs> is not a tablespoon. <laughs> and it's funny. Cause like you don't, and that's the one thing I, uh, I don't know if anyone, unless you have a little bit of culinary background or really love to cook, like when oil is heated up, it expands. That's why they say a little bit goes a long way. And it's the honest to God truth. A tablespoon in a hot pan will cover the entire pan. You don't need more than that. It's just then your food will be oily. And next thing you know, you're eating too much fat to begin with. Next thing you know, your food's tasting like olive oil. And it's like, that's not needed or whatever kind of fat that you do use. And that's another thing too. It's like, yeah, we didn't even talk about weighing yet, but it's like, even if you don't track your calories, just understanding portion control of weighing things mm-hmm. will help you out tremendously. I mean, Okay, that's another thing too. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, man. Like I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, oh, yeah. bro. Especially with like some good chips. Like I'm all in on that. Mm-hmm. When you start making, when you start splitting a tablespoon of peanut butter on bread for two sandwiches, or just putting two table, one tablespoon, like you look at it, you're like, well, that ain't fun, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. But it, that's what all this does. It brings it all to light. What it really is. Yeah, I love it, man. I I think it's one of those things like. And going back, digressing a little bit to like the foods that we leave in our, our houses, our apartments or in our kitchen cabinets and everything in our fridges. It's like to have the awareness around that you kind of, you kind of go through a little bit of this, of the stages that you've gone through and that we're talking about here on this podcast. It's like, you have to understand like, oh, I could have those cookies in my house and not eat them. Good. Good for you. That's great. Most people can't. And if you want a change to happen um, a physical change, a mental change, a change in your body. If you want to look better naked, like we always say, like, you, and if that's a problem, then you have to figure out how it, to make it not a problem. And I think going through these things, like you said, sometimes you have those urges, but you know, but you didn't know before. None of us had the education before until you had it. And then when you go for it, you kind of question yourself. And I think there's a, 
a split second there with someone who doesn't have the education would just dive in, you know, and I think you kind of have to go through that. Is that some of the biggest things you've learned from having a nutrition coach? Yeah. I mean, it's learning how to track and like what all goes into your food content and, you know, quantity versus quality, you know, high volume versus low volume foods. And you, you learn how to like, you know, plan out your day and eat a more, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, eat a more nutritious meals, but also um, something that's going to fill you up and make you satisfied. You know, you know, it's not all about chicken, broccoli and rice um, every day. <laughs> like, you know, who no, will see not. that every day? <laughs> no, it's not. Um, so like once you start learning that, you know, all the different foods you can include, um, which is anything really, um, it, it makes it much more enjoyable. And that's what makes this whole process sustainable is being able to work in anything you want and just, and learn more about the food you're eating. Yeah, the, the plan has to be, you have to be able to adhere to the plan put in for your lifestyle, right? For what you want to do, you can never look at anybody else's template or whatever anybody else is doing. I think that's where you can kind of get lost. Yes, I agree. I mean, and that's, that's why I think a lot of these diets, you know, don't work, you know, and some people, yes, have great success on keto or right. you know, low carb or, you know, the what, low fat, whatever other diets there are out there. Some people do great on them and, you know, kudos to them. I just, I knew in the very beginning that I needed to do something that I'm going to be able to do the rest of my life. And I know that those kind of diets, I'm not going to sustain the rest of my life. And nope. some, some people can, and you know, some people can, you know, go on those diets, lose the weight, and then somehow magically convert back to like a normal eating lifestyle and not put back the weight, which is awesome. You know, I wish I could have done that in the beginning, but that's not what I can do. So that's why I've tried to learn, you know, all these things through a nutrition coach of like how to eat the food you like and make a plan that works into your lifestyle, not trying to work a lifestyle into a plan. I love it. Yeah. I think that's where everyone, everyone kind of fails at that. It's like, you have to ask yourself, like you may see a lot of success. A lot of people may claim that they've had success through all these, all these fad diets that are out there and they come and go and they're like a, a flash in the pan, man. They're here and they're gone. Their books are written about them and they're the biggest thing. And next thing you know, next year, you don't even hear about it. You hear about three other things that come up from the same fucking authors. You know, it's like, that's what happened. And that's what happens. People don't want to admit to that. And, and yes, like you did say, kudos to the people that can do it. It's a very small percentage. But like you said, I think the, the, the elephant in the room is, it's like, can you catch okay, great? You want to do that? Do you think you can do that for the rest of your life? And people look at that like, well, no, that's no one diets for the rest of their life. It's like, there's no ceiling with the nutrition that we're doing. There's no ceiling with fitness that we're, that we're performing. There's no ceiling to this thing. You've lost the weight. You've had to go into a deficit. You've had to come back to maintenance plenty of times. It's all planned out. You look and track your food. You track your calories. You weigh everything out. And now you're coming back to maintenance again. When you shed a little bit more weight, now you're going to start like, hey, now I want to put some muscle on. Like you're already mm -hmm. putting muscle on, but then it's like, there, there's no limit to the possibilities of where you can go in this journey. And I think that's a big thing that people think. I think it's a big problem too, that people put an end to things. Yes. There is yes, no see, end. There really isn't. And that's the thing. You can't say, you know, I'm going to go on a diet, you know, like you really shouldn't be going on a diet. You, you, know, you should be making changes that you're going to be able to keep, keep up with. And, you know, and like you said, there's, well, as soon as you hit whatever your goal is, you know, you need to start looking at your next goal. And, yep. and then as soon as you hit that goal, go to the next one. Um, because if, as soon as you stop trying to make success, that's when you start sliding backwards. 100%, man. I love it, Chase. I love your, where your mindset's at, man. It, it's, it is really incredible where you've come from. And I think this is just the beginning, man. And losing all that weight, I think shows you that, dude, there is no ceiling to your own fitness journey. And I think you can, you can attest to that. And anyone that is listening, I challenge you. I challenge you to try to try to do something like Chase has done for over a year. Stick to it. And I'm sure like, like we talked about, there is times when hell you needed a Saturday. You needed that day off to be mm -hmm. like, fuck tracking. I want to have some fun today. And like you said, you went on a week vacation. You came back. No wait. Like it's that, and that's that we have to start looking at things that way. And I mean, it may not be sexy. It may not be what you want to hear. It may not be the, the cool thing that's in right now on a fad diet, but Hey, this is real life and real life sustainability leads, you know, that, that adherence is what happens. And that's why it's sustainable to you and your lifestyle. What you've done, man, I applaud you. I hope the whole community does as well. I think you're on an amazing journey and I don't even think at 25 years old, you know where it's headed yet, man. I think you got, you have some great things coming your way. Thank you so much. 
I want to say thank you so much for coming up here on the hour. I want to say thank you so much, Chase, for your time and your energy, man. I know time is something that we can never get back. And I appreciate you. And I know the community really does appreciate you being on, man. I really thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This, this, this has been awesome. You know, I listened to your podcast and, you know, always, you know, some great episodes dropped and I always love listening in and, you know, your story is amazing as well. And so when, when you asked me to be on the podcast, I was really honored. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's super humbling to hear. And I really do appreciate it. I'm a big fan of yours, man. Where can everybody find you at to kind of watch your journey, bro? Well, as you mentioned, I'm on um, Instagram at changing underscore chase. Um, always posting things up on there. Um, you know, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation, some tips and tricks about, you know, and also about my journey as well. Um, and I'd just like to keep everybody informed of what's going on with me and staying accountable to my own you know, goals and everything. So find me on there and, you know, if you got any questions, hit me up. You know, I, like I always tell people, I, I don't know it all, that's for sure. But I know a lot of people who know a lot of stuff. So if I don't know it, I can point you in the right direction. That's awesome, man. Uh, community, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time and your energy. And I always like to end the podcast by saying thank you so much for you. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And without you, Chase and I probably would never met. And without you, this podcast would definitely not be here. So we love each and every one of you guys. And we will see you soon. Chase Smith, thank you so much, brother. Have a good rest of your day and a better week, brother. All right, you too. Thanks.